Today we're going to be looking at Fallout 4 on the PS4 and the Potato Masher. In case you don't know, the Potato Masher is a $350 PC custom built in December of 2014 and designed to compete against the PS4 for the remainder of its life cycle. The goal is not to make fun of consoles, but to show that PC gaming can be just as cheap and even better than gaming on a console. It's a project run by the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, so click the link on screen if you want to check that out. There's also a FAQ video if you want to know more. Lastly, this was recorded and uploaded at 60 FPS, so switch to that if your browser supports it. Let's get to it! First, let's talk about the minimum requirements for the PC. As usual, they're basically just random pieces of hardware that sound nice in a list that have little bearing on the game's actual performance. The Potato Masher doesn't meet the minimum requirements for processor or RAM. It does exceed the requirements for the graphics card, and of course it has plenty of hard drive space. Given this, you'd think that it would maybe be able to run the game at low or medium settings with a few issues. Well, that's not the case. Literally everything is turned up right now. Every setting. Even God Rays, which looks no better at Ultra than at low. I've locked the frame rate at 30 FPS and set the resolution at 1080p to match the PS4 version. Potato Masher is not pushing itself very hard to maintain these settings. That 8GB RAM requirement is definitely not necessary. RAM usage usually stayed under 3.5 gigs, but it did occasionally climb to 3.8. That's totally normal and average for modern games. As usual, if you have more RAM, your system will use it. My personal computer has 16GB of RAM, and it uses almost 10GB when I'm playing Fallout 4. But the game does run perfectly fine on the Potato Masher with 4GB of RAM. There is some slight controversy about whether or not Fallout 4 is a good-looking game. It definitely looks better than Fallout 3 or Skyrim, but does it look good? Without getting into a larger discussion about how the graphical arms race hurts the gaming community, I'd say that Fallout 4 is behind the times but looks fine. There are some oddly low-res textures on both the PC and PS4 that are just hideous. Thankfully, these are pretty rare. The art design is great and unique, but you won't forget that you're playing a Bethesda game. Faces have a flat and dead quality to them, and animations are similarly stiff and lifeless. Also, shadows flicker and fade in as you approach objects. This is somewhat noticeable on the Potato Masher, but very obvious on the PS4. The PS4 just doesn't have shadows past a certain distance from the player, and watching them all appear as you walk through the wasteland is distracting. Grass and objects also load much earlier on the PC than on the PS4. Lighting appears to be mostly the same across both versions of the game, but it did appear that shadows were slightly deeper and there were a few more light sources on the PC. On the Potato Masher, the frame rate was largely stable. There were occasional slight dips to 27 or 28 FPS, but these were for no more than one second. It appeared to be because of additional artwork assets streaming in, which is fairly common for an open world game. Fallout 4 has a very ambitious amount of objects and characters to load as you move through the world, so a momentary frame drop or two isn't a big deal. The PS4 does unfortunately tend to struggle a little more than that, though. I can't measure the PS4's frame rate with the equipment I have, but Digital Foundry's excellent technical evaluations show that it does drop in frame rate somewhat consistently. I did notice this when I was playing the PS4 version, so hopefully future patches help with that. The Potato Masher's frame rate was definitely much more stable. 30 FPS is fine if you're into that sort of thing, but 60 FPS or higher is usually preferred by most people who've seen the difference. That said, you always have to drop the graphical settings a bit to stay at a steady 60, so it's not always worth the trade-off, depending on your hardware. On the Potato Masher, I had to lower the settings to medium to maintain a stable 60 FPS. I did turn God Rays down to low, but it looks identical to the higher settings and mostly just wastes performance and makes AMD cards look bad. On medium, shadows do start to fade in noticeably sooner, and turning down anti-aliasing does produce a slight shimmering effect on distant objects. It still looks better than the PS4 version, but it's slightly inferior to very high. Action is much better though, and panning and moving feel more fluid. I'd probably take the visual hit to keep the frame rate up. 60 FPS definitely feels worth it. Here's where we throw practicality out the window and just see how far we can take this machine. Most people don't spend more on their monitor than on their PC, but the Potato Masher would be ready for it. I could run high settings at 30fps and 1440p, which looked pretty great. 
there's a noticeable clarity boost, especially with distant objects. 60 FPS is much harder though. On very low settings, the frame rate would stick at 60 until I got into combat or in other situations where there was a lot going on. Then it dipped to the low 50s pretty often. That's still a good frame rate, but at those graphical settings, the shadow pop in, shadow resolution, and distant object detail is pretty bad. 4K is a similar story. That extra level of detail is nice, but I had to settle for low settings and 30 FPS. The frame rate stumbled often enough that I wouldn't say it was stable. The frame rate was worse than the PS4, but better than the Xbox One. Unstable frame rates aren't ideal, so I would say that the Potato Masher did not do an acceptable job at 4K. For how it looks, a lot of people are disappointed with how poorly Fallout 4 seems to run on a wide mix of hardware and both consoles. While the Potato Masher was able to max out the settings, I do agree that the game should probably run a little better or look a little nicer. Part of that is due to the large open game world, but The Witcher 3 and GTA 5 both managed to look cutting edge and run decently well. Future patches and improvements may help with performance, but for now, the game is still really enjoyable as is. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking it or leaving a comment. Please check out the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast and the FAQ video if you have any questions about the Potato Masher. The original build video can also be found in the description. Let me know what games you'd like me to see me test next, and have a great day.